This YouTube channel called Final Galaxy is absolutely crushing it with some jaw-dropping numbers. And the funny part is that it's not even a year old. Check this out. The channel was only created in August of last year, and in such a short time they've managed to rack up over 1.7 billion views. Yeah, billion, with a B. And on top of that, they've already gained 8 million subscribers. What's even wilder is what they're doing to rake in these insane numbers. They're simply taking well-known superhero characters – Spider-Man, Supergirl, Wonder Woman, Venom, Deadpool, Joker, Harley Quinn, and a few others – and creating fun, engaging stories around them. But for some reason, viewers just can't get enough of their videos. Just look at the numbers. They've uploaded around 180 videos, with most of them racking up millions of views, and one even crossed 100 million. Even their newest videos are pulling in millions of views. And the craziest part is that they're not the only ones crushing it with this strategy. There's another channel called AI Samosa that was just created this past December, and it's already racking up some insane numbers with about 700,000 subscribers in just a few months. And these are just a couple of examples. This whole superhero story trend is still blowing up. Others like this channel called Fifi Tells You are using a similar strategy, except they're putting their own twist on it. Instead of using DC or MCU characters, they've gone all in on Sonic the Hedgehog, mixing it with incredible storytelling and visuals. The result is nearly a quarter of a billion views and two million subscribers, all from a channel that only launched a few months ago. Then there's Monsterverse Cartoon, which focuses on monster stories featuring legends like Godzilla and Kong. And yep, they're seeing massive success too. This whole niche is exploding and these channels are proving just how powerful it can be when done right. And if you're wondering whether channels like these can actually be monetized, here's a quick way to check. Just copy the channel's URL, head over to Google, and search for YT Large Monetization Checker. Click on this option, paste the channel's URL, and enter whatever number it asks for. Hit Enter, and in just a few seconds, you'll know whether that channel is monetized or not. As you can see, this channel is monetized, and so are the others in this video. So if you're thinking about getting into this niche, you don't have to worry about monetization. It's completely possible to make money with this strategy. To make things even easier for you, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating videos like these. I'll show you everything, from coming up with ideas to creating images and even how to get some really cool voiceovers for your stories. And finally, I'll show you how to edit everything together in CapCut. To make things even simpler, I've put together a Google Doc with every single prompt I'll be using in this video. You can find it in the prompts channel of my Discord server, the link will be in the description and on my channel page. To prove to you that this isn't just some BS, check out this short demo I created using the exact strategy I'm about to show you in this video. Oh no, not again! What happened? My web shooter is broken! <laughs> oh no, my spider sense is tickling! What should I do? Take this. These are shoelaces! <laughs> Help me! Use this quick! The first thing you need is a story. This part is actually pretty simple because you can take inspiration from other creators in this niche. But if you're looking for ideas, just open the Google Doc and look for this heading. You'll see three separate prompts listed under it. But before anything, it's important to understand the kind of stories these channels are creating. Most of them follow a few specific patterns, and I'm going to break down three of the most common ones. The first one is Spider-Man as the underdog. He gets put in some humiliating situation and the others mock him. But by the end, there's some kind of poetic justice that flips everything around. The second style has one of them struggling with a problem. Everyone tries to help but fail miserably, and then out of nowhere, the underestimated Spider-Man comes up with a clever way to fix everything. And finally, there's the superhero girlfriend dilemma, where all of their girlfriends, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, and Harley Quinn get into trouble. Other heroes pull off some over-the-top rescue strategies and impress their girlfriends. Spider-Man also tries to save or impress his girlfriend but completely fails, getting mocked in the process. He turns to the viewers for help, before finally coming up with a brilliant, unexpected strategy that saves his girlfriend. These three aren't the only story styles these channels use, but they're definitely some of the most popular ones. Now back to the Google Doc, you'll see that I've created three separate prompts, each designed to generate stories in one of these styles. You can choose whichever one you like, or even test all three to see what works best for you. For this demonstration, I'm just going to copy the first prompt and head over to a text generator. You can use ChatGPT, DeepSeek, or Quen. I'm sure you're familiar with DeepSeek, but if this is your first time hearing about Quen, it's a large language model developed by Alibaba. And the best part is that it's completely free, at least for now. One cool part about it is that you can even use it to generate images without paying anything, so feel free to check it out. But for this demonstration, I'll be using DeepSeek to generate our story. 
Now go ahead and paste the prompt into DeepSeek. You don't need to tweak much, just specify the number of stories you want to generate. For this example, let's go with five. Hit enter, and in just a few seconds, DeepSeek will generate a list of potential story ideas. Take a moment to go through them and pick your favorite, or if none of them stand out, simply hit regenerate for a fresh batch. Once you've chosen a story, it's time for the next step, generating images. This part is just as simple. You can read through your story and come up with descriptions yourself, but AI can be useful here as well. So head back to the Google Doc and copy the next prompt. Paste it into DeepSeek and make two small changes. First, you need to specify how many image prompts you want. Let's go with 20 for this example. Then second, you need to replace the placeholder with the title of the story you selected. Just scroll up, copy the title, and paste it in. Now hit enter and let DeepSeek generate a full list of detailed image prompts for your story. As you can see, DeepSeek has generated 20 unique prompts that you can use to create your images. But keep in mind, these prompts may not always be perfect. So what I suggest is that you test them out and make any necessary tweaks to get the best results. Now that the prompts are ready, the next step is to generate the actual images for the story. You can use Piclumen, SeaArt, or any other image generator you prefer. But Leonardo AI works perfectly for this kind of content, so we'll go with that. Open Leonardo AI and select Image Generation. Now you need to pay close attention to these settings. You can either go with realistic or 3D images for these kinds of stories. But for this demonstration, we'll be going with 3D. So the first thing you need to do is to go to Preset and make sure this Phoenix model is selected. Now close the pop-up and go to Style. Make sure you select 3D Render and choose a high contrast. Finally, go to Image Dimensions, click More and choose the 9 by 16 aspect ratio for short form content. Close the pop-up and paste your prompt inside the text area. Feel free to make any changes to the prompt, but once you're done, go ahead and hit Generate. You only need to wait for a few seconds, but check out these images. They look alright, but in case something isn't right, you can always modify the prompt and regenerate. Repeat this process for every other image you need for your story. Once the images are ready, it's time to create the voiceover. I've put together a prompt to simplify this part, but from my experience testing scripts for this niche, it's actually easier to go over the story yourself and come up with the dialogue manually. The interaction flows better and feels more natural that way instead of some robotic-sounding AI-generated dialogue. But if you want to use the prompt, go to the Google Doc and copy everything under this heading. Paste it inside DeepSeek and scroll up to find the story you selected. Copy the entire story and replace the placeholder text in the prompt. Hit enter and wait for the dialogue to be generated. The AI has created a decent script, but again, I highly recommend writing your own. It doesn't take long and the final result will sound way more engaging. For this demonstration, I'm going to use my own. For the voiceover generation, you can use whichever tool you prefer. But Eleven Labs works perfectly, so we'll be using that. Head over to their voice library and choose Characters and Animation. The first voice we need is that of Spider-Man, so hit this button and select Male for Gender. Test the available voices and select whichever one that you like. If you want the same one I used for the demo, search for Mad Scientist and add it to your voices. Now paste the text and hit Generate. Based on my experience testing this voice, you may need to generate it a few times to get what you want. You can also play around with the settings and go back to the voice library for Venom's voice. Simply repeat the same process from earlier, or if you want the one I used, you can choose this one. For Supergirl's voice, look for the legacy voice called Gigi, or if you want the same one I used for the demo, go to the library and change the gender to female. Now search for Annika and add it to your voices. For cases where you need something like Venom laughing, you can either find it online or create it yourself. Let me show you how to do it. First, go back to DeepSeek and type this command asking the AI how to generate Venom's laughter. Hit enter and DeepSeek will provide some instructions. You don't need to worry about all the details, just focus on the input text it suggests. Copy whichever one that fits your narration and paste it inside Eleven Labs. Click Generate, and if it doesn't sound quite right, tweak the input slightly and try again. It's that simple. Just make sure you label your audio files properly so everything is organized and easy to find when you start editing. Now that the audio files are ready, the next step is to edit the video, but before that I like to enhance the quality of my images. Feel free to skip this, but your final video would have a higher quality this way. You can also do this after you've created your video, except most video upscalers can be quite expensive. So it's easier to increase the resolution of the images first, before importing them into the video editor. The tool I recommend for this is Upscale with a Y. It's free to install on your computer and works for both Windows and Mac. 
Once it's installed, you can add individual images and enhance their resolution separately, but that can take too much time. Instead, it's better to do them all at once. Put your image files inside a single folder, then check Batch Upscale and select the folder that contains your files. Next, choose your preferred model as well as the scale you want to enhance. For these images, three or two times should work perfectly. Hit Upscale and the upscaling process should begin. The duration typically depends on the speed of your computer and the number of images, so the entire process could take anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes. Now it's time to edit the video. You can use any video editor you prefer, but CapCut works perfectly, so I'll be using that one. The first thing you need to do is to import all your images as well as the audio files. Arrange the images in the timeline according to the flow of your story. I'll start with this one of Spider-Man swinging and bring in the second one. The length of the images can be anywhere from half a second to four seconds long, so I'll shorten this one. Keep in mind that this mostly depends on your story and the voiceover, so some of these images may be even longer. I'll bring in the voiceover for this part and shorten the clip, then repeat this for the next few clips. Keep in mind that the volume may not be equal on all the voices, so you may need to increase it to match up with the rest of your audio. I'll quickly speed up the arrangement. In case you find a voiceover file like this where there's a huge gap, and the volume on the first part seems to be higher than the second, simply split and rearrange it. Then finally increase the volume on the lower track. Now keep arranging the images and voiceover till you reach the end of the video. Next, you need to add sound effect. For places where you need something like a police siren, simply head over to Pixabay and search for police siren. Play a few and download whichever fits perfectly. Alternatively, CapCut has a bunch of sound effects available, so you can go to audio sound effect and search for police siren. Drag it to the timeline exactly where you want it to start and crop it at the end. Now, one very important part of this style of video is where the character asks the viewer for help. You need the icon of an arm and a like button. Go to a website like Flaticon and search for an arm. Look through the result and download whichever one you like. I'll go with this one. Repeat the same for the like button and import them inside CapCut. Before we add them to the timeline, you need a dark background, so make sure you're on media. Go to Library and grab this black background. Drop it here and use the Crop tool to decrease the height. Now, bring in the Like button, resize and position it on top of the black background. Repeat the same with the image of the arm. Now go to Text and drag the default one to the timeline. Replace the text with the equal sign and bolden it. Move it up and position it between these two images. Now we want these icons to move on to the screen, so we need to add an animation. But first, select the text as well as the two icons, right-click and create a compound clip. Go to Animations and choose whichever entrance animation you prefer. I'll choose this one. The duration is already set to half a second, so let's leave it like that and trim the clips. For something like a web shooter sound effect, you can find it on YouTube. Import it inside CapCut and trim it. Repeat the same for the Joker's laugh, as well as any sound effect you can't directly find on CapCut or on Pixabay. This is already looking good, so it's time to add transitions. Before that though, you first need to select these tracks and create a compound clip. Now you can go to Transitions and look through the available options. Choose whichever ones you like. You can use as many different styles as you prefer. No need to worry about it being too dramatic. Drop as many as you want between the images. The video is already looking good, so it's time to add a filter. You can test out some of these filters to find the one that fits your style. But for this demonstration, I'll just choose this clear filter and drop it inside the timeline. Then extend it to fit the duration of the full video. Check out the difference when I turn off the filter. It looks considerably better. Now the final step is to add the background music. You can grab something from YouTube Audio Library or a platform like Showsick. Add it to the timeline and trim it. Don't forget to decrease the volume so that it doesn't overpower the voiceover. Check out this video. It's looking great, so you can go ahead and export it at 1080p or 2K resolution. Oh, and one last thing. Don't forget to mark this as altered or synthetic content when you upload. Also, if you found this useful, then check out this two-week-old channel that's killing it with more than 150,000 subscribers.